All right, I'm coming, I'm coming. Hi everyone, and welcome to my Platonium Fuel Rod Battery Tour. It took me approximately 81 hours over 5 weeks to build, and outputs 2 Platonium Fuel Rods per minute. Currently sending them to the sink to be recycled until I have built the plutonium waste storage facility. Once that's done, they will be sent to the nuclear power stations for use. And if you like this and would like to see further videos, please consider leaving a like, perhaps also a comment, and hitting the subscribe and notification buttons for future videos because there will be more fantastic builds coming your way. Hi everyone and welcome to my plutonium fuel rod battery tour. Here at the entrance we have 240 water per minute coming into the factory to help make sulfuric acid and nitric acid solutions for the manufacturing process. As we come into the factory, we enter into a tunnel system which I have surrounded with lights to try and give it the appearance that we are kind of in an underwater or surrounded by plutonium solution. So we enter the factory and we come over to here which is the area where we can turn the main, the main power on and off in the factory or control the outside lights or the inside corridor lights here. We have crates with supplies that you might need whilst you're at this factory, hazmat suits, infused filters, and around the back on this side we have two train stations. This one in front of us here bringing in aluminium sheets and the one over here bringing in aluminium castings and nitric gas. This factory took me approximately 81 hours to build over the course of five weeks. I wanted to give up so many times but thought it would be worth it in the end. So as we come up this is the first logistics floor. Everything from the outside world comes in here or hidden over there in the corner from the train station and heads up to our first manufacturing floor. So here as we come in you can see that we're making 600 quick wire per minute. Here we are making steel beams 36 per minute using the solid steel ingot recipe so we're making iron ingots which go up to the next level to join the forge. Here we are making 150 steel copper sheets per minute which I haven't put the number on the end. There we go. Over on this side we are making some steel pipes and over here we are making additional copper sheets for another item. So those copper sheets there and these copper sheets are for different production purposes. And the same with this quick wire we're making here, this is for a different production line. So this quick wire is a 360 per minute. We just head up to the next manufacturing level. Here we are making chitarium ingots which are heading actually back downstairs to join the production line. And this is where we are making the solid steel ingots which are then going here to make steel beams. This is all of the storage for the copper sheets coming down from below.
And the same here, we're storing the steel pipes and copper sheets and quick wire. Each of these hyper tubes are the same as in my main battery. So red goes down, green goes up. The stairs will take you to every level in the factory, whereas the hyper tubes only take you to every manufacturing level. Skipping the level I have below, which is logistics, where all the belt work is, and the level above, which is storage. We'd also notice here that I have a black wall. This black wall is a warning to say this is where you need to put the hazmat suit on, as every level above is now radioactive. So we can equip that, and we just head up to the next level. Here we are making electromagnetic control rods, so we have six assemblers making them and they are making 24 we are making ai limiters here again six assemblers they are overclocked each to 110 percent and we are making 33 there we are making 48 stators here again six assemblers over here we are making heat sinks so we're making 22.5 heat sinks per minute on three assemblers here we are making iron plates 40 per minute for the nitric acid solution and up the front here, we are making steel canisters for the water packaging up above. We're making the steel canisters alternative recipe so that we don't have to deal with bringing in plastic canisters or oil to make canisters for the excess water in this project. So we now head up to the next level. You can see now that it's quite radioactive and it just gets stronger as we go. So over here, we are making the sulfuric acid solution. So we are making 150 per minute in these free refineries. Just going into the storage buffer heads downstairs to logistics and then back up over here allowing us a nice walkway area back here we are also making the nitric acid solution which does the same thing as to the buffer and then down under the floor to give us a walkway area and we also have uranium waste and uranium ore coming in to join the blenders here in order to make our next item which we are making a hundred per minute of in each blender so that makes us 500 per minute over on this side is where we are packaging the water that is outputted from this process so it's packaged up here and just heads off to the sink for now until i have a future use for it whoops wrong direction So as you can see it gets taller as we go we are now coming in to the particle accelerator floor this is where all the items from below come together to make our encased plutonium cell using the alternative instant plutonium cell recipe now we're only just making what we need for this production process 
So at the moment, the manufacturers above stall out waiting to get the amount that they need in order to manufacture at two per minute successfully. For now, I'm not too worried about that as I will be coming back to increase the production so that it's got a constant supply. And over here, we have like a little viewing window into the logistics area. So we can come in here and have a look to see if all of our items are heading up the belts or whether we need to fix it. Unfortunately, at this stage, I'm having a lot of trouble with belt rendering. So these belts are actually full. So one has heat sinks, one has steel beams, and the other has the electromagnetic control rod. But unfortunately, you can't see them here. We just know that they're there. So now we can head up to the final level before we hit the roof, which is the manufacturer level, which is making the plutonium rod. So they come in here to eight manufacturers, four on each side here, all producing 0 0.25 per minute, equaling two per minute. And as you can see, we're still waiting for the particle accelerators to make the plutonium cells that will eventually speed up. But I will come back soon and overclock the particle accelerators so that it happens a bit faster. And now we head up to the roof. On the roof, we have drone ports. This one is bringing in the uranium ore. We have a sink where temporarily the plutonium fuel rods are coming in until I've built the plutonium waste storage facility. Once that's done, the plutonium rods will come into this drone port and head off to the nuclear power station for use. And this one is bringing in the uranium waste, which you can see is coming in from our uranium waste storage facility over here in the distance. It holds 1.5 million or just above 1.5 million units of uranium waste. And as I said in previous videos, this uranium waste barrel is going to be redecorated to make it look more appropriate and match the uranium waste barrel we have on our conveyor belt. That won't be done until after I have made the plutonium waste storage facility, which will look like a plutonium waste barrel. And just down here, we have all the resources coming in from the, from the desert for use in this facility. Originally, all of these resources were coming in to the nuclear facility for use in its production. But since update four, that's all changed and we have now have blenders making the system so much easier. So all these resources were not used anymore. So now they're belted in here and used in the plutonium fuel rod. And that makes the tour of the inside of the plutonium fuel rod battery factory. Unfortunately, it is a bit of a letdown on the inside. I do have some more decorating to do to make it look a little bit more like a fuel rod from the inside, but that's for a future project. I still have more projects I need to do in this world. I need to go back to the main factory now and get copper powder in production, and then I'll make the plutonium waste fuel rod. But now I'll leave you with some shots of the outside of the rod from all angles and what it looks like at night time lit up.
please consider subscribing, liking and hitting that notification bell for future videos. And until next time, I'll see you later.